Um, so hey, everyone. I'm uh, Stephen Augustus, head of open source at Cisco. I've spent a few years in the cloud native community and kind of open source overall, starting at a, a, core, a little company named uh, CoreOS. You may have heard of it. Um, CoreOS, Red Hat, Heptio, VMware, now over at Cisco. Um, Kubernetes steering, to-do group steering, OpenSSF governing board, some other stuff, but uh, Liz, want to take it away? Yeah, I mean, we've known each other for years through this whole community, right? I, I mean, kind of like Kelsey said, you know, Kelsey and I go way back, Stephen and I go way back. Uh, I've been involved in the CNCF for like a million years yes, yeah. on the TOC and the governing board now. Uh, and at Isovalent, I've been there for almost like, well, it's three years and about a week. Uh, and as chief open source officer there, and prior to that, I had some other startups that weren't quite so successful, some others that have been pretty done okay, uh, or are doing okay. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I love this space. Yeah. And as you probably all heard, we're we doing are, a little thing. We're yeah. doing a little acquisition. Yeah. yeah. So um, you know, it's uh, you know, with the the usual preamble that um, you know, future looking statements, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we are in the uh, pre closed state for the isovalent uh, acquisition with Cisco. Really exciting. Really exciting times. Um, I think the biggest piece of this is to uh, to to me personally the um, it's. All of the conversations, what Kelsey said, it's what Liz said. I've spent a decent amount of time in space. Liz has spent a decent amount of time in the space. Um, I'm looking out into the crowd and seeing, um, you know, seeing lots of seeing lots of former coworkers, seeing lots of uh, uh, former uh, former coworkers, current friends, current best friends, even right. Um, and a lot of the people at Isovalen are, are friends that I've worked with multiple companies at this point, right? So like, when I heard this was happening, I was like, oh, yes. Coworkers again. <laughs> so, uh, just a brief. Is anybody here? Well, who knows about Isovalent? Who's heard of Isovalent before? Okay, quite a lot of hands. I brought up this slide from 2020 with our co founders, Thomas and Dan, looking extremely youthful. Um, and, and really, our mission hasn't changed at all since these kind of much earlier, this is from a pitch deck from, from 2020. Um, you know, our background really strong in Linux kernel, in networking, in security, and particularly in the eBPF technology that we've been working on. And Cilium, which I'm hoping a few of you have used. Any, any hair here? Yeah, Cilium? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm um, going to run very quickly through the history. So 2014 was when eBPF was started. Watch the documentary. Cilium's been around since 2016. It was another year until Isovalent was founded. Then we started getting pretty quickly picked up by some cloud providers who wanted to use Cilium. We were very involved in the community right from, from the get-go with things like eBPF Summit. 2021, we contributed Cilium to the CNCF. More providers start picking it as their uh, networking solution. Then last year, we graduated, and right at the end of the year, just before Christmas, nice we got quite a nice fun timing. Christmas present. Nice little present. Christmas present, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, GitHub Stars, kind of a nice thing to look at and see how your project's being adopted, not necessarily very concrete. What is much more concrete is money. And uh, I haven't put a scale on there, but as you can see, really from, you know, for several years, we were getting a good multiplier on our revenue. So although, you know, I think it's incredibly important how engaged we've been with the community, it is also incredibly important as a business that you have paying customers. <laughs> so yeah, so the view um, from the Cisco side is, uh, you know, a lot of what we've said already, um, we've got all of these experts with deep, deep expertise kind of across the stack. We've got kernel networking, security, cloud native experts, um, recognized open source leadership. I think we are merely a small percentage of, uh, of some of the brilliant people who, who get to work on and in and around um, the isovalent team. And uh, you know, so we've we you know we've got TOC members. There are you know governing board members across multiple spaces. We've got Duffy in the crowd as well as uh, field CTO, but overall brilliant man. Um, <laughs> you know, so so looking at uh, you know, so I, I think for from the community angle, there is there's always this conversation about trust, right? 
Um, you never want to see a. Uh, you never really want to see the the big. You know the the corporate Goliath kind of, kind of swing in and and, and go. Uh, uh, yes, this is how you should do this thing, right? Um, it's really about having that conversation in the community, and I think you know there's there's a very visceral reaction um, when you deal with having that you know kind of having that conversation between a large enterprise and a smaller company. That's like, hey, we're in. I think one of the conversations I like to have internally is um, so. For context, I uh, so I work for Outshift, which is Cisco's incubation arm. And if you've seen the news recently, um, we have a, a new chief strategy officer, which is not a new chief strategy officer. Our, our chief strategy officer is also the um, is also the uh, chief of staff for uh, for the CEO. Um, but we've combined the corporate strategy uh, development, uh, corp dev, and incubation groups. So I work within the incubation group for Cisco. Uh, Cisco's OSPO and Cisco Research are the two groups within incubation that have a global mandate, right? So we don't just work in Outshift, we work across all of Cisco, right? And from that perspective, um, you often have to have this conversation in the incubation arm about um, when you're competing against startups. Right. Um, how do you compete against a startup when um, the, I think the difference um, in, in a startup is that there is an existential threat, right? From from the incubation perspective in a large in a large corporation, if we mess up, you know, someone might give us some more money and we try to do it again, and you know, and you know, if something sticks, and then we can we kind of put the machine behind it and 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 run with it. If you're a startup and your idea doesn't work, you die. Right. Um, so there is a. I, I think there needs to be a recognition and understand, understanding that um, the people who are working on these technologies day to day at startups, they're trying to build something to survive. Right. Fundamentally. Right. Um, so when you ask, so you know, having the conversation around build by partner invest, that's usually the conversation when you when you think of M and A. Um, is this something that we could replicate ourselves? And um, I think the, the answer is obvious. <laughs> um, again, it's that recognition that when you when uh, the folks that work on uh, work in isovalent spend so much time in this space, respect that, right? Respect that, and and figure out how to to to, to work with it. Um, so Cisco was a Series A investor, kind of saw the 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 um, the, the various uh, investors across the board, but we've been we've been kind of looking at isovalent since you know since 2020. Before that, um, and then really, uh, you know, the final bit from you know the Cisco view is is it's a perception change, right? Um, when I started at Cisco, and roughly roughly similar to you, so I started at Cisco in 2021, and I you know I, I wish I could say it was just a uh, a passing comment from one person or so, but it was. Uh, I got it pretty often, so I'm going to say it here. Um, and they're, uh, wow, I didn't realize Cisco worked on open source. <laughs> and, you know, so I, I think a lot of people uh, recognize Cisco as like, ah, oh, hardware, networking. Yes, you want boxes in your data center, we can do that for you, right? Um, and I don't know, the, the very brief history that I've had in open source, I don't know, maybe seven years at this point, we have people with decades of experience in open source who have founded, you know, who have took projects to graduation, took like before there was even maturity model, models for, for projects, created that process, right? Work, in, work across a bunch of SDOs and open source foundations before they were foundations. Um, and I'm just a little guy in, in comparison, right? So, so that, that tells me that there is a, there's a perception problem, right? Um, so, so part of this is how can we learn the magic how can we replicate it across Cisco? Um, and how can we let these leaders with an ISA veil and kind of carry that torch across from business group to business group? All right, so uh, I guess three principles that we've always had in ISA veil is you know, foundational. The team, incredible talent, but not just talent, also the right values. I don't know if he was in the room for Tim's talk earlier, but he spoke about you know having a team that share values. And I think that's really important within iSurveillance as well. And the, the culture is incredibly important. We spend a lot of time and energy investing in what our culture is. Technology, obviously, also incredibly important. And, you know, I have the privilege of working with some of the best minds in, you know, eBPF, in kernel networking, in cloud native networking. It, there's so much expertise available. And then also just having this really 
you know, being determined to have successful customers who, who love working with us and who are successful because they've worked with us. And those three things I think are really crucial. At this point, I haven't said the word open source. Yeah, that's weird. Maybe we should talk about that. Open we should, we right? should yeah. talk about open source. A little bit. I, one of the reasons is because our culture, particularly on the engineering side, has been so uh, based on people who've come from the kernel world, who've come from an open source world, that it's kind of implicit. You know, we, we've really kind of embodied open source, I think, since, since day one um, and been really focused on getting that open source project into the hands of users, getting feedback from users. Also, I think from a kind of foundation point of view and the kind of things that we learn from, you know, being in environments like this, the importance of things like diversity, the importance of bringing in people from different backgrounds, whether we're talking about the benefits to the project, the benefits to our culture, you know, we're an incredibly distributed team, I think having that kind of uh, trust and um, kind of transparency within the team has been super important. And we've tried to extend that to the community as well. I've got the kind of logo there from the EBPF Summit 2020. That was the event, I spoke at it, I wasn't at Isovalent at that time, but it was participating in that event and seeing how incredibly honest Isovalent and Thomas and Dan and, and all these people were with the community and how much they were kind of investing in making that summit successful for everybody who was involved in that technology. I loved it. And, you know, that that was what kind of pulled me into the into the organization. And I, th I think from the leadership level and the like the individual level, right? Again, there are so many brilliant, talented indi individuals across this this team that each of them have their own value system, right? And 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 part of that is like making good software. They're not just they're not just contributors and maintainers, they're users of these things. They're actually trying to solve problems that they themselves had, right? Um, so seeing that uh, seeing that form in the aggregate in a company, right? And seeing that be a, a, just a very honest um, waypoint um, for how isovalent delivers and how isovalent prevent, pre uh, presents themselves in the community is, uh, has been really impressive. So why do we do all this community engagement and what's, what's kind of in it from a business perspective? Oh, I stole your point, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we can say, we say these points over again, they, they might land. Um, yeah, so being successful within the community and having people who are using the open source project really does help promote the project. I mean, it's almost... It almost goes without saying, but maybe it doesn't go without saying, that, you know, if you have a an independent person who talks about your project or talks about your paid product, but it's more likely to happen for an open source project, that independent enthusiasm for your project is worth more than you can spend on like actual paid marketing. And, and I think as we have these conversations of kind of like top down, bottoms up motions and you know, PLG, PLG and growth, um, the, uh, I think an important realization to have when you're interacting um, in open source spaces, right? Whether it's GitHub, your Slack channels, your discords, your matrix, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that is, you're having a conversation with a potential user, with a potential customer, right? And each of the people within your group, within your company, need to market to that, right? So every, every, every good, every bad interaction that you have across GitHub, that counts. Mm -hmm. It shows up somewhere. Um, and so again, not just, you know, not just being independent advocates of the, the software, but being able to create those connections with people on, again, on a, on a GitHub, on a Slack channel, in a very genuine way. Um, that allows them to, because you are never going to reach, you're never going to reach um, full penetration of your audience, right? Um, but having people who can advocate for you, having those champions within companies, right? They, I use this, I love this, every time I'm working with the maintainers, I'm having a great time, right? That counts for something. That counts for something in the sales, the sales conversation. And if you cast your mind back to that graph of, you know, GitHub stars and how the revenue kind of followed that, that kind of makes sense because the more people who are using your project for free, the more people there are, you know, what some proportion of those people need some help or additional. Yeah, tell me about Cilium Enterprise, features. right? You know. 
Exactly, exactly. And, I mean, Stephen's talked quite a bit about, you know, the, the expertise that we have and, and sort of recognising, you know, how we, uh, you know, how, how talented our people are, I guess, and, and you know, how uh, we've been able to teach and educate others in the community about the kind of technology that we work with. And we find that, you know, that's, that's something we, we're very proud of and, and enjoy doing. Um, and then also we get to learn from the community. They teach us about what they need. They tell us about their problems. And that's really enabled some pretty innovative that's things out of our team. That's your roadmap, yeah. right? People are telling you exactly what they need. Figure out how to, how to turn that into product, right? So, you know, you can create some amazing open source software, which you are giving away, but that's not necessarily going to be sufficient for everybody. And so long as there are enough people out there who want to pay for something that you're adding value with, whether that's enterprise features, whether it's support, whether it's the additional field hardening that we have in our enterprise distribution, whether it's that ability to work together as kind of design partners for some specific problem. These things are all adding value. And, you know, I just put a few of our yep. customers up there, but, uh, you know, th there's a significant set of customers who are not, uh, who, who won't feel comfortable if they're just using open source solutions, that they want somebody at the end of a phone essentially to, to you know, help them when things go wrong. So, so seeing a few Corios in the room, I want to talk about something that we did at uh, CoreOS. So I was on the customer success team, um, also uh, eventually field engineering, spent a lot of time interacting with customers. Um, we've got some folks in the room who are also solutions architects. Um, and we had something called field validation, right? Um, so when we released, uh, every time we released a new version of Tectonic or, or, or Quay, um, Core Update, we had this process where we would step through, you'd, you'd have to assign at least two members of either, you know, a customer success field, solutions architecture, and we would sit down and we'd run th through the checklist. We'd see if the checklist was valid, right? We'd think about all the questions our customers were asking us and we would, we had the ability to block a release if we could not validate that it would work for a customer, right? So being able to have that feedback loop between, between folks who are working in the field, make, again, to that field hard and releases, um, being able to, to have some sort of feedback loop that, that you can ensure that your customers are gonna be successful because you're actually listening to them and you're building that feedback back into the, um, back into the product, so. So from the Cisco side, you know, what are we going to do? Again, you know, Kelsey kind of kind of touched on the the you know the the imminent danger that you have when a, when you've got the the you know the the corporate Goliath comes and and takes your baby, right? And and and, and you know, I, I think for for all of us who are like very excited about the acquisition, just as much we we spent time on you know kind of going through Twitter and Mastodon and, and Blue Sky and reading the the comments, like reading you know never read the comment section. Sometimes read the comment section, right? <laughs> Um, the, you know, and, and of course you're going to see the, uh, well, does this mean, uh, Cilium's dead? Um, well, oh, I, I, I got to start learning this thing or that thing. Right. Um, and, and no, that is not what that, that is not, um, what is happening. I, um, remember having a conversation with our, our lead open source council who spends time doing, um, uh, spends time on M and A. Um, and he goes, have you talked to Steven about this yet? Um, and they're like, no, we were probably going to bring him later. He's like, you should do that now. Um, so during the tail end of the, the conversation, I spent time on, on tech due diligence for this, uh, for this uh, uh, deal. Um, and I, I, th I think one of the, the biggest conversations that we had throughout that process was, don't mess this up. Do not touch them, right? This is magic, right? You have to respect the magic, right? So the idea is that we keep the team together, we understand the model, right? And that should be, that needs to be a blueprint. I think it's very easy when we, so my incubation group, we spend a lot of time like finding interesting startups and having conversations. And sometimes those conversations turn into to, to, uh, acquisitions. Um, so so there's lots of, there. I think there are lots of little pockets of, you know, you can find multiple co code forges across Cisco. You can find multiple collaboration tools across across um, Cisco. And I think part of that is understanding how people work well, right? Understanding how those teams work well and 
not trying to, to mess it up, right? There, I think there is that, that eventual conversation about how does this integrate into long-term strategy for this business group, for this, you know, for, for the company overall, but we need to continue investing in the customer experience. We need to make sure that we don't change the momentum of how Isovalent is already having conversations with existing and potential customers, as well as how they are continuing to maintain the open source projects that we have. So, so what I see is this is an opportunity for us to, we have a few different things happening at Cisco that have, you know, just beautiful confluence, right? We have the, you know, we're, we're still pre-closed, but, um, you know, this is, uh, we've got Isovalent coming in. We just closed uh, Splunk uh, yesterday. Um, we've just hired a new, uh, uh, so my, my peer on the legal side, an open source legal director, growing the open source legal team for exactly these kinds of conversations. So like, this is our opportunity to double down on our investment in, in open source, right? We already have leaders coming in from Isovalent. We have leaders within Cisco. I see a few of them in the room, um, uh, on the cloud native security observability networking, um, angle. Uh, it is time for us to all get together and, and show up in force, right? I think it's, it's very easy in those pockets of the company. We are a company of uh, 80,000 plus people. It's very easy in those pockets to, um, again, this goes back to the, wow, Cisco, I didn't realize Cisco was doing open source before you joined, which is, frankly, it's not a great statement, right? So, so using this opportunity to say, like, let's let's talk about what Cisco is actually doing, right? Isovalent is one component of it, but from the cross BU angle, um, the way that the way that eBPF in general as a technology has, has the potential to penetrate across so many layers of the stack, right? So we're having conversations about security, we're having conversations about networking, we're having conversations about observability. Um, those are multiple groups within Cisco, right? Those are thousands of engineers. Um, so this is a huge, huge opportunity, not just to work in, so Isovalent will be landing as an entire unit, which will not be touched, within the security business group, but it's not just about security, it's about everything within Cisco. We have recently, um, within the last year and change, uh, there was something called the Cisco um, Cisco Transformation Office uh, that was that was created and with the with the intent of shifting the uh, shifting uh, our ARR away from uh, away from hardware sales and into more software based revenue. Right. Um, so this is a component of it. Splunk is a is definitely a component of it. Um, so it's Cisco is. I, I want to make it very clear. Cisco is not just a hardware company anymore. We haven't been for a very long time, and I hope that. Uh, the moves that we have coming in the future will allow you to see that. I think we've got about one minute, and I really wanted to make sure we had time oh. to share some of the like lessons that uh, you know maybe we can maybe helpful for other open source startups. So one is that you know value your time. I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago with a maintainer on a different project who was talking about how much time he spends supporting for free. And then he named like one of the world's top five biggest banks. And I'm like, why, why are you doing that for free? He's like, well, because they're using my pro. Yes, oh. get them to pay for it. Yeah, <laughs> they, you know, they, if you know, it, somebody comes and tells you they've got a problem in production and it's really urgent and critical that they solve it, or they basically make it very clear that they have extremely deep pockets, don't just give things away. Your time is valuable. Like, you know, they are sending you a massive signal, waving a big red flag, saying we want to pay you some money. See those signals and you know, act on them. So, in investing in the community, I think we've we've talked a lot about this. Um, I anecdotally spent some time as uh, KubeCon program chair, and uh, we had a few companies who would who would kind of dial in and go, "Hey, we've got really low acceptance rates. What's going on?" Um, you could submit a thousand proposals that are not high quality and they will get rejected just the same, right? The, the problem I think in those situations is that you don't understand what the community mean, needs because you're not spending time with the community, right? So it's, uh, so I think you need to fundamentally, you need to get in, into the dirt, you need to invest in the community, you need to understand what they need. You need to be your community. And you need to understand who your community is and, and who are the people who are important to you your project and your business. Don't get distracted by your competitors who will sometimes say things that are distracting and can be quite an emotional and time sink. 
And really, you have to be very careful about how much time you invest in things that are not actually of any interest to your real community. People will try to burn your time and energy in unproductive ways. And the more you can ignore that, the more you can rise above it, the more you can just focus on doing the right thing for the people you care about, the better. Yeah, I think it comes down to being being better, right? And, and and again, realizing that each of those conversations that you're having there are sales conversations. We got the sign, so I'm just going to hit yeah. the, the last slide. Um, the uh, yeah, I I found this uh, this quote on the Cisco acquisition slide, and I think it does make it very clear that you know we are very well aligned. Cisco is aligned with the vision that isovalent has for cilium you know investing in cilium open source in building business on top of that you know i think we couldn't have landed in a place that is better aligned i'm so excited, <laughs> I'm so, excited. <laughs> um, so hopefully there's time to squeeze in a question or two. Oh, i got I questions hope. sorry folks <laughs> i'll get some to the audience too uh, look, I think Cisco, and you know this well, you're in a very important position in the stack. Every company is, and we've seen this with NVIDIA, made GPUs, they're going up the stack. But in their case, other vendors and their competitors are also part of their community. So I'm going to challenge a little bit. When you work at that level at an open source project, you're going to attract all kinds of people, other developers, other contributors, and competitors, especially as good as that software was at that level of the stack. Going forward, you're probably going to see a lot more competitors show up, and I think they're going to probably want to be in your community because they're going to try to fill a gap, even if it's a perceived gap, that is going to be left behind because whenever there's an acquisition of a startup, some companies or some people may elect to deal with companies that are not a part of a bigger one. How do you reconcile that statement? I mean, it, you are 100% right. We have already seen one competitor who is explicitly going out there and saying, oh, now that iSurveillant is being bought by uh, Cisco, there, you, know, you need to come to us for your vendor neutral solution. And I'm like, wait a minute, you are a vendor. How, how is your solution vendor neutral? Anyway, so uh, yeah, I think it. Is, I think it is. You know, and we wanted to hit on that last point last. If we, next time we will uh, leave more time. But like, I think it, it really does come to that, down to that in integrity yeah. component, right? Um, being better, right? We are. I, I think in this industry, you get to a point where, as you go up the stack, across the stack, up, down, left, right, B A B A, start of the stack. You like you. You see that it's impossible to 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 finitely say like okay, these people do this, these people do this, and, and, and make it really easy. There is always gonna be that, that co-opetition, right? Those, the, the frenemy situations that you have to, that you ha have to kind of deftly navigate, right? And I, and I think a lot of it is um, uh, Joe Vita quote, right? Wear your agenda on your sleeve, right? Um, we know what we're doing. We are open source, we are open source veterans. Continue to do that, continue to execute on the roadmap from the open source perspective, from the product perspective, and have those conversations. Maybe those are, those are opportunities to partner. I don't think they need to be opportunities for, for competition. I think also, you know, when we donated, I don't like the word donate, contributed uh, Cilium to the foundation, you know, that comes with the essentially a guarantee that we can't change the license obviously that's been a contentious you know thing in the last year or two uh for other companies i think the fact that we had the confidence that you know it's fine you know we have so much expertise in the team and i think we were prepared to stand behind that expertise and say you know other people can come and work on this code too. That's great. Please, you know, feel free to build projects, well, products on this project. But we feel so confident in the conversations that we've had with our users and our customers that we, you know, we will, you know, if we don't retain that advantage, we have screwed up. Like, it's on us to do that right. So throughout the day, we talked to, we had some venture capitalists come up to talk about the investment stages. Looks like Cisco was in one of those investment stages. Um, in many ways, you've kind of been a part of the exit now, right? So what's the exit strategy? And so when you think about it, and maybe you touched on it in your talk a little bit here, you bring on this group to, you know, that buy versus build. Do we go and compete with the startup that has all of this expertise? You, you want to bring them in instead, right? So you acquired a great piece of technology 
great community that comes with it and some really great engineers. But I'm imagining lots of people who rely on this technology, some of them that have never paid for this technology. The question that tends to come up in moments like this is, how do you recoup this investment? Right? It's, it's, you know, these, this is business that we're talking about. This is the startup fest. So we're going to give a little bit of leeway here for business. When you think about a return on investment, in your mind, Stephen, I know you can't speak for all of Cisco, so I won't put that spotlight on you. But when <laughs> yeah, you think about return on investment, what comes to mind in terms of a product, technology roadmap, and then what the community looks like over time? Yeah, so I think you know, for uh, on, on on the personal level and for the open source program office, the one the opportunity kind of on that 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 last point that I hit for um, this is a perception change, right? So I think some of the return on investment is having people understand that Cisco can be a trusted partner within open source communities, and we have been in the past um, and, and will continue to be. Um, from the, well, what are we gonna sell people, right? Um, there are some things that are in the works um, that I cannot announce yet um, that are directly related to the, the ISA Valen acquisition. I think it was a pivotal moment in the conversation with the security business group that, that was we could do this, and I think we're on the precipice of trying to do this. Why would we spend the time? Uh, why would we try spend the time trying to build something better than what already exists, right? Um, so I think it's uh, there's a counterbalance of well, what is the investment in uh, engineering resources and marketing resources to get something new out there that is kind of already built, right? Um, so we'll we'll see that come to fruition, and you know, in the next few quarters. Um, but you know, I, I think you know, in, in, in terms of return on investment, I think it is split between the the open source reputation and continuing to build upon that, and then the well, what can we what can we crank out? What can we crank out afterwards? Right. So I think continuing to maintain Cilium Enterprise and some of the the, the, the enterprise um, offerings within um, coming out of the ISA Valent team, and then also starting to build on top of some of those partnerships, those existing partnerships across whether it be cloud providers, whether whether it be um, you know fr you know competition frenemies in, in, in the space. Awesome. That's time. Big round of a hand for our. Thank you very much.